Hi, CFA Level 2 candidates. My name is Darren Kerr, and I work for Serify on the Mark Meldrum CFA course. In this video, I'm going to talk through some final study tips as you prepare for your CFA Level 2 August 2025 exam. During the video, we're going to go through some of the differences between the Level 1 exam compared to what you'll now face in the Level 2 exam. We'll also take a quick look at the level two exam topic weightings and how that matters with how you allocate your time over these final weeks before you go and take your test. Then we'll discuss what you should be doing over these final weeks before your exam and then how you should shift your studies over the final days right before the test. And then finally, we'll spend a little bit of time talking through what to expect on exam day. Now, in terms of the differences between the level one exam and now the level two exam, realize that the level two exam has less than half as many questions as the level one exam. You have 88 questions on level two compared to 180 over there on the level one exam. So for time management issues, level two candidates that are reasonably well prepared usually don't have an issue finishing the test. That being said, you do need to have a strategy for how to kind of manage through the two different sessions so that you have plenty of time to go back through and answer questions that maybe you have flagged and didn't answer the first time around. A major difference between level one and level two is the format of the exam. If you remember back to level one, every question was a standalone multiple choice question. Here in level two, you'll still have multiple choice questions and three possible answer choices, A, B, or C. But you're now introduced to an item set format here in level two. You have item sets that provide you with a set of information, which we call a vignette. And following that information that's laid out in that vignette, you'll have four multiple choice questions. Again, still three possible choices, A, B, or C, but those four questions are grouped together into this item set. Each session has 11 item sets, meaning that you'll have 22 item sets in total across the level two exam. And again, with four questions per set times 22 item sets, you'll have a total of 88 questions. Now, if you were to look at how to allocate time, approximately 5% of the exam and thus 5% of the time allocation should be for each item set. That's an approximation. It's a little bit less actually than 5% if you were to do the actual math, but just to give you a sense in terms of how to allocate your time across the sessions. Now, another thing about the sessions, each level two session is two hours and 12 minutes in length. That breaks down to <clears throat> approximately three minutes per question. Now you don't wanna be spending three minutes on every question, your first time through the exam. You want to make sure that you get through it a little bit quicker than that so that you have time at the end of the session to go back and rework questions that you had flagged and didn't answer initially. And then also that you'll have time to go back through and try to you know, uh, work through some questions that maybe you, you did answer, but you would prefer to, to spend a bit more time on to see if you can get to a more higher level of confidence with the choice that you had made. Now, again, with two hours and 12 minutes, and if you pick, take that, you know, and look at it across 44 questions, it's about three minutes per question, or it's exactly three minutes per question. Level, um, level one candidates, those candidates have just, uh, with 180 questions, 90 per session, one minute and 30 seconds per question. So that's a pretty big difference in terms of timing. It's, you have half as long, on a level one question as you do on a level two question. And that's why a lot of times the well-prepared level two candidates don't really have an issue finishing these sessions. Now, I wanna share with you all the level two topic weightings. You have the same 10 topics that you had in level one, but the reason I'm sharing this is because you have these ranges that you could really group into two categories. One category would be, the, the larger weighted range of 10 to 15% or higher rated range of 10 to 15%. The other is the less weighted range of 5 to 10%. So half of your topic areas, ethics, 
financial statement analysis, equity investments, fixed income, and then portfolio management have that higher 10 to 15% weighting. And then the other half of the topic areas, quantitative methods, economics, corporate issuers, derivatives, and alternative investments have that shorter or smaller 5 to 10% weighting. Now, the way that I look at this is by item set. Approximately 5% per item set means a 10 to 15% weighting would imply two or three item sets, two or three of those four question item sets. Whereas the 5 to 10% weighting implies one or two item sets. So when you go back and you do your review, you want to make sure that you're thinking about the topic areas in a way in which the CFA Institute exam writers would be able to formulate item sets. We do a lot of this discussion when we go through our instructor-led course and even in our office hours with our candidates. To give you an example, with financial statement analysis, you've got several readings, and if you wanted to break them down into item sets, that first reading on intercorporate investments could have two different item sets, one focused on financial asset classifications, the other on the equity method compared to the acquisition method. The second reading, it's got two big, big topics in it as well, share-based compensation expense, stock options and restricted stock units. That could be its own item set. And then in the latter part of that reading, you have pension accounting. So you could have a, an item set just focused on defined benefit pension plans. Third reading focuses on the multinational operations and foreign currency translation. That material could be formulated into an item set. The fourth reading's got the financial analysis of financial institutions. You could have two different possible item sets there, one focused on a bank, another on an insurance company. And then in the final couple of readings, you've got one on financial reporting quality and another on financial analyst or analysis techniques. Those potentially could get grouped into one item set, those final two readings. But I've just rattled off now seven, eight different possible item sets that you could have here in the financial statement analysis material for level two. And again, with a range of 10 to 15%, that implies that you'll only have two or three item sets for that topic area, meaning that there's going to be a lot of material that you study and prepare for that will actually not be tested on the exam. And you got to get used to that. It was like that in level one. You have a lot of LOSs that probably didn't end up appearing on your exam in level one. The same's going to be true here in the level two. But again, it's helpful to have this topic weighting table nearby as you approach your final weeks of studying so you can really focus in on the core topics, the ones that have that 10 to 15 percent weighting. Don't ignore the other ones, but if you had to choose between studying one topic or another topic, do be aware of which ones have the higher weighting compared to the others. Now, in terms of what to do over those final weeks, mock exams. Do at least five, maybe more, but do at least five mock exams over the final weeks of your preparation. If you have not done a mock exam already, we suggest that you do one this weekend. And again, a lot of times students will they'll wait. They'll try to wait and review their notes and go back and rewatch some videos and reread some of the curriculum book so that they can be better prepared for their first mock exam. That is not the approach that we recommend. We instead recommend that you just dive in there and try one of these things. Get a gauge for what these item sets look like, all grouped together, 11 per session, 22 in total, and what it's like to have to navigate through all of that through two two hour and 12 minute sessions. These will gauge your level of preparedness and they're also going to guide your studies over the weeks ahead. You'll then have some data that you can use to formulate a more accurate study plan for those final weeks. You'll know where you need to focus. You'll also know where you might be a little bit more comfortable with some of the topics in the level two content set. Now, how do you use those mock exams? As you go through them and look at your result and determine what needs work, where you need to focus, you can then use the Q banks to formulate quizzes 
to focus on specific readings and even specific LOSs within those readings to make those improvements. You have the Mark Meldrum QBank available on the site, and you also have the CFA Institute's QBank that you can use from their learning ecosystem. So using question practice as a way to improve between mock exams is a great use of time over these final weeks. And again, you'll be guided as to where you need to improve based on the performance from your mock exams. So as you do that and you do some practice questions from these QBanks, you then might determine that you might want to rewatch a portion of a video. You might want to read a couple book uh, pages from a curriculum book. You might want to go and take a look at some of the notes that you made when you were going through that material so that you can really improve on that specific area. That's an active way of studying across these final weeks. That's what we want you to be doing. Question practice, mock exams, and then if you need to, to fill in some of those knowledge gaps, you can target certain parts of certain readings by rewatching a little bit of video, by rereading a little bit of the curriculum book, by reviewing a little bit of those notes. But again, you know what you need to specifically review based on your performance on the mocks and the subsequent questions that you practiced after determining where you need to work on based on those mocks. Another thing, practice ethics. You had it in level one. It was a big topic in level one. You're here now in level two, so you made it to level two. But realize that that ethics material in item set format is not going to be easy. You're going to have at least two, maybe up to three item sets dealing with ethics. And in that item set format, you're going to have to navigate through at least a page of text to be able to answer the subsequent four questions. You're going to need to be well prepared in how the CFA Institute applies those different standards of professional conduct when going through and answering those ethics questions. So in order to get yourselves prepared, we suggest some practice regularly. Daily would be ideal over these final weeks. Five questions, maybe up to 10 questions per day over the last month or so should get you to a place where you're pretty comfortable with this ethics material. Now, as you shift to just the final few days before your exam, this is when you can do that overall light review of all of the curriculum topics. This is a moment to go back through all those notes that you took when you were going through the curriculum initially. This is an opportunity to review those formula sheets. It's also a chance to do that last look at ethics to make sure that you're ready to go there. Um, it's not really a good time to be taking <clears throat> mock exams the final couple of days. Hopefully you've done several of them before you get to those final couple of days before you go and actually take the test. So by the time that you're, you're here with a couple of days to go, you've done the heavy lifting, you've done the mocks, and now you're just pull, pulling it all together as you review the overall curriculum. Another thing that you need to work on, or at least get organized in these final couple of days, would be the logistics of getting yourself to the test center. Will you take a taxi? What about an Uber? Maybe drive yourself? You want to make sure that you have your plan as to how you're going to get to the test center all mapped out. And in terms of getting there, how long is it going to take? How long does it take on that specific day of the week at that hour? You should be able to map this out using one of the ride sharing apps. And then once you have that knowledge, give yourself some extra time. Depending on where you live in the world, that's going to vary. But I would say at least 30 minutes extra time. Worst case, you get there 30 minutes early. That's not so bad. A lot of times the proctors will allow you to begin the exam as soon as you get registered and get into the testing room. So get get organized with regards to how you're going to get there and get yourself to the exam center early on exam day. You also want to get yourself organized with your passport and your calculators way before you actually have to leave to go and take the test. So don't wait until the night before to get your, your backup batteries organized and your extra calculator organized if you have one. Do that a few days before so that if you do need to go and purchase some backup batteries or test those batteries to make sure they work, you have time to resolve any issues that might arise there. 
Now, what to expect on exam day? You want to arrive early, as we just said, because you can control that. You can get yourself up and moving a little bit earlier than maybe you need to and get yourself to that test center 30 minutes or so before your, your time. Focus on what you can control. The unexpected may happen at the test center on that day, and you got to be okay with that. Just kind of roll with it. I live here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've been here for a bunch of years now. And back a few years ago at one of the test centers, the students were taking the exam and the power went out, the lights went out. They had to sit there and wait for approximately one hour, hoping that the lights would come back on. Eventually, the lights did come back on and they were able to continue with their session and ultimately complete the exam. But they didn't know if the lights were going to come back on or not. They didn't know if they were going to be able to complete their session or not, or if their exam results would just simply be voided and they'd have to retake it from the beginning. They didn't know any of that. That was unknown as they waited it out, hoping, I would assume that some of them were hoping that the lights would come back on. Maybe not everybody, but eventually they did. And those that were well prepared and were able to pass that exam moved on to the next level. But that's not something that you can control. So don't worry about it. If it happens, just deal with it. Relax, roll with it. The CFA Institute will figure out a way to handle such a situation if it was to arise. And again, not something that you can control. So not something that you should worry about. Another thing, one of the sessions might turn out, at least in your opinion, to feel more difficult than the other session. Realize that that's normal. Realize that that is okay. It doesn't have to feel like both sessions were equally easy or hard or whatever. Probably it won't be easy, but you get the idea. Uh, it's okay to have an opinion that one's a little bit more difficult than the other, because that's usually how students feel after they've completed the two sessions. It's normal to feel stressed. It's, an, it's a high stakes exam that you've been studying for for several months. It is totally normal to feel a bit stressed on exam day, especially even in the lead up to it, but certainly on exam day. Pause, take a deep breath or two if you need to, but get refocused and continue on focusing on what you can control. Quick comment, don't discuss the exam or any of the details about it with anybody there at the testing room or other candidates that are around you that day. Really, not just then, but after as well. But just don't get into those types of conversations. You don't want to be, I certainly don't want to be talking specifics because you know you're not supposed to do that. But you also don't want to hear people complaining about how hard it is and how poorly they're doing. You don't want to hear any of that. So stay in your own little world. Focus on what you can control and stay positive. You're not going to get every question correct, probably. And that's okay. You don't need to. You don't need to get every question correct to pass this exam. You can get approximately 70% correct, and you'll be moving on to level three. So that's fine. So understand that. There'll be, in a couple, there'll be a couple item sets that you don't really like. You can still get a couple of the four questions correct from those item sets, hopefully. But there'll be item sets that give you a little bit of trouble. Again, normal. Hopefully not too many. But if a couple of them do give you trouble, it's fine. Stay positive realize you don't need to get them all and move on and do your best. Maximize your points. And like I said, focus on what you can control. But that begins now. That begins a few weeks before by doing this active studying through mock exam practice, question practice, and really targeting those knowledge gaps so you can get yourself up to speed and have the best chance on exam day. We wish you all the best of luck over these final weeks of preparation and on your level two exam. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out to the Serify team. Thank you all.